Durant passes Shaq. Durant is now the eighth leading scorer of all time, even though he missed most of 2014 because he hurt his foot, or 2013 because he hurt his foot. Um, he missed all the Achilles season between the Warriors and the Nets. And he's probably, he's probably missed two and a half years because of injuries. And he's just been 28, 29 a game now since 2009, 2010. Um, I think he's been probably the second most discussed player of the last 15 years behind LeBron. Yeah. Um, I am, yeah. I am in the KD, I'm in the pro KD defender camp, but I also see the points some people make about it. Um, why is there, why is there so much conversation with two sides with him specifically compared to some of the other players in the league? What do you think it is? And you played against him for a bunch of years. What what is it about him? If we're going off of talent and scoring ability, there's there's no question, right? Every player talks about it. Like, bro, this guy, the way he scores, he's number one in the NBA. Number one. And he has been. Uh his longevity as a scorer and hooper is still not appreciated enough. We 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 praise LeBron every day, as we should. Um, we are even now talking about Steph. And like Katie just is like kind of swept under the rug. Meanwhile, the guy's just like averaging like 27 at age, whatever he is. He's like in his high 30s, still putting up 30 and 40 point games. He's basically a 50, he's a 50, 40, 90 guy for this decade. And he, that's insane. Yeah. It's insane. Uh, and it, you know what's even more insane, Bill, is the degree of difficulty of shots that he shoots consistently, contested, fadeaways, mid range. He's heavily a mid range player, pull up threes off the dribble. These are the toughest shots in basketball. And he's made them at a high clip. Um, Every long player that has decent skill, when they come out, like, oh, Kevin Durant. But we haven't seen one yet. Even cut, touch the surface of even being near him. Every lanky player we see in college or high school, uh, he has the ability to be Kevin. Bro, it's not happening. The, that guy is like a phenomenon. Just how like we haven't seen like a guy before LeBron or after LeBron, we also haven't seen anybody like Kevin. We haven't yeah. seen anybody at seven foot be able to move and shoot and have the skill level like he has. So you ask this question, why isn't he regarded as such? The Warriors thing just it changes it changed everything, Bill. It, it it and I'm not saying it's 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 right or wrong, but when you lose three one to a team and then go to that team, and it's not only that you went to the team, it's the fact that everybody knew how good you were at that time. You were the, you were the second best player in the NBA. It was LeBron then you. When you go to that team, you made it. I don't want to say you took the easy road, but it was the road that like. We knew him going to that team. I don't because it's 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 soft to say it's not fair. Um, but this guy went to that team and he was still the best player in that team. By the way, Steph was the most important to that Warriors team, but Kevin Durant yeah. is the best player in the team. All right, and everybody yeah. saw that in the finals when they went against LeBron. Uh, the guy was incredible. It just felt like, man, I just think you're too good for this. So, and we give him credit. He was still the best player on the team. The finals MVP, two-time champion. You got to give Kevin Durant his flowers for that. It just felt like he was too good to do that. He was too good to do that. And that's what like, even they, they gave LeBron shit for years when he went to Miami. You know what I mean? It's just like, the Cleveland championship meant way more. It's just like, bro, you, you went and got that. You know right. what I mean? You went and did that. This one felt like, you know, it's like, come on, man. Like, I, 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 especially since you had enough. You had Russ there. You had everything there. You were up 3-1 versus Golden State. It, it just, the timing of it wasn't right. And then, you know, he's bounced around. He went to Brooklyn. It didn't work. And he goes to Phoenix. It didn't, like, we haven't seen him on his own just go get one. Where I've seen Steph do that. I've seen yeah. Steph win after KD left. He won before KD was there. Stamped. You've seen LeBron win in every single place he's been. Cleveland, Miami, Lakers. The guys won a championship. Stamped. Kevin's the third guy in that tier, man. We talk about the, the best players of the last decade or more. It's LeBron, Steph, and Katie. They're the three guys that are above everyone else. And two of them have done it on their own or done it with their teams, where Katie has simply only done it with the Warriors. That's it. And we've had these weird years with Kevin where they like lose early in the playoffs. We saw Boston, that weird Boston series a couple years ago where like Brown and Tatum like really went at him and like we we're like, what the hell is this? What's going on? Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, and like they're like to guarding the him. Tatum yeah, it was just outplayed like, him severely. Was, that was like, whoa, what's that's that's weird. I we didn't. I've never seen Kevin this vulnerable. I've never seen him play like that. Like, so like we have these instances like that to where like the media obviously they they pick a, they pick him apart 
He's a guy that goes at people on Twitter. He's a guy yeah. that's very emotional. They caught him with the burner. They, he's talking to people. He always has comebacks. He has something to say. He is a very emotional guy. So people like throwing stones at his glass house. And that's the difference between, think about it, man. Steph is so regarded and self-respected and well-respected and he's, he's professional and he stays out the media in that lane. And like his media is run like, I don't even think he controls his Instagram. It's clearly it's somebody else. You could tell by the pictures <laughs> that are posted. Right. Like he's, he's, he's not even involved in that. He plays, he does his thing. He's built his legacy. He's been on one team his entire career. Uh, that's a whole different thing, right? You can't say anything with Steph. LeBron's LeBron, so we're not even going to get into that. So like Kevin has these things. They're like these little points that I just named. I named like 10 of them. Like you can like throw a stone at and break that glass house so people feel like he's he's this or that. And because of that, it gets in the way of how great he is. Because I'm with you, Bill. Like, I got in, people thought I was crazy for saying Kevin Durant's a top 10 player. I said this the other day. I was like, for me, man, I know it's hard to compare guys in the 90s and 80s, but based off of scoring and skill, and I've never seen anybody like it, like, Kevin's like a top 10, top 15 player of all time for me, man. Like, the guy in any era just dominates. He is a mm. scoring machine. I've always been a big Kevin Durant fan, so I am biased. I, I love watching him play, and I just think he's unbelievable as a basketball player. I played pickup with him last year, uh, I mean, last summer, this past summer, uh, before I decided to go and do the media stuff. I played pickup with him like every other day. And the, the games were incredible, Bill. I mean, we were out in, in the Valley. It was Devin, myself, Trey Young, Chet Holmgren. I'm talking about it was filled with pros. Jalen Green. It was an invite only, and it was Kevin's pickup. Kevin sent the text out. It was only 12 to 13 guys. If you weren't on the list, you didn't play that day. And th it was his pickup. So everybody wanted to play because it was Kevin. When I tell you he was so much better than everybody else in the gym, it was laughable, man. He scored like, <laughs> the, first he scored like the first nine points of pickup. I remember at one point, like he hit a tough fadeaway off the glass, like going to his left. And I look over and you could see like other gyms and coaches just like, God, Lee, man, he's so gifted. He's so good. And we don't appreciate Kevin enough because of these other things, man. And like, I, I wish if he wins a championship, like with Phoenix or somebody, like it would help so much. And I don't think it's going to happen because I don't think Phoenix is good enough. Yeah. But that's the issue there. He has these things, Bill. He has these. He has these problems. He has these little, these little chinks in the armor that like we've seen LeBron and Steph not have. And like that's that's the difference where like people, I think, unfairly sometimes are so off of Kevin. That's one thing, like you have some bones to pick with some of his decisions he's made, whatever, whatever. You don't like you going to Golden State, okay, fine. But it's the difference to be like, man, Kevin, he's not even a Kevin's not like but now we're wilding. Now, now we're now we're doing too much. You guys need to take a step back and really watch and look at his numbers and his portfolio, and then come back and talk to me because the guy is unbelievable. I don't know. That's my. I opinion. still defend the Golden State thing. Yeah, I I thought at the time I I, I don't know if uh, I don't know if I would have done it, but I understood it because he had been there nine years with Seattle Fair. and then eight years in OKC. He probably had, had enough of the Westbrook experience. Yep, the team itself. I think for years and years, they did the hard and trade like they didn't spend enough money. I mean, I've right, talked about this so many times on this podcast, but I, I yeah. at, at least understood it. He wanted a life change. He wanted to live in the Bay. He wanted to play in this awesome team. And I think he thought of it like, I'll go here for three years or four years and then I'll figure yep. out the next thing. And until he got hurt, it worked. I mean, they were going to win three titles in a row. He was playing the best he'd ever played when he got hurt. He had that, uh, that Clipper series. Were you on that 2019 Clippers team? No. No, I think you were gone at that point. Um, he was so awesome in that. Like, I really felt like that oh, was my the God. best yeah, that was, played. That, you're right. He was having like 50 every game on like... Yeah, and the like, Achilles thing, with, yeah. to me, the Achilles piece is the part that gets forgotten. You know, if LeBron had just gotten hurt in 2012 and missed a year and a half, like we would have mentioned that a couple of times. But that's one. And then I, I'll never understand the Brooklyn thing. And maybe the Knicks weren't in the place where any player would have taken the organization seriously and wanted to go there. But to, he had his main person, Rich Kleiman, who they did a podcast recently. And Rich was like, I was trying to get you to go to the Knicks. And Katie's like, yeah, that was a mistake. I should have listened to you. For him not to understand how irrelevant Brooklyn is in the New York market compared to the Knicks, it's way worse than the Clippers. It is. The Clippers yes. have been here in the 80s and 90s. Brooklyn's like... Eight. They're completely meaningless in New York, you know? And for him not to get that, I just thought was a weird move. You know, you talk about not having an identity. You know, Brooklyn... They're number one. Know, yeah. 
Yeah. And it's, it's, it was, you know what that was, Bill? That was, he won two with Golden State, remember? And yeah. then the Draymond, the Draymond thing happened, right? Well, the, that, yeah, that was. That, and that started it, all right? And after those words were said, sometimes even when you forgive each other, you don't forget. He said those words to him on the court. I don't know what exactly was said. I, I, I heard what it was said. I don't want to speak on it because, you know, whatever. He said some things to, to, to KD and that, that, that changed the way KD looked at, I think, his place there. And I think he felt like, wait, wait, wait. And to Isaiah Thomas's point the other day, I think KD felt like, hold on, wait, guys. I know I came to y'all's team. I know y'all won one before me. Let's not act like I didn't, I didn't make yeah. this go longer. Let's not act like I didn't make us unbeatable. I, I, Kevin made that team that special. They were beatable. They just, you, Isaiah. I was, by the way, I went to that game and I watched the whole thing happen and I knew it was like, oh my God, this is, it was, it was going to be bad. Then it got bad in the locker room too. And they, they never recovered from it. But I think a lot never. of that had to do with KD. It, he'd never really committed to whether he was going to stay after that year. And it was just this festering, weird kind of situation. It's like when your parents aren't, getting along, but you don't, they're not, nobody's saying anything. And then it just blows up at Thanksgiving one night. The yeah, right, game was right. like the Thanksgiving. It was like, wait, what's happening? <laughs> Mom just threw a turkey at dad. And they, <laughs> and they had won two. So at right. that point he got his rings. He wanted, at that point, I think for him, he was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go play with my boy Kyrie and James. I'm just going to go play with my homies and let's go see. We're going to win. We're going to have fun. It wasn't even a logical decision. I right. think he was just in his mind, like, I'm going to go play with my friends. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it this way. You know, because he just won. He got his rings. That was like his thing. He got my rings. I did this. I was finals MVP. People can say what they want. I'm going to go play with my boys. Yeah, I, be I beat the LeBron head to head two straight I years. I beat LeBron. Which now and, and he gets no credit for that. He doesn't get credit for that. The only reason he doesn't get credit for that is because to, to LeBron's help, LeBron was out there by himself playing against them, and Katie had too much help. So it's like LeBron was Katie, out there the second year by himself, but not the first year. Not, no, no, no. Not the first year. year the yeah, first year, correct. the teams from a salary standpoint were even. He yep. had Kyrie. He had Kevin Love, who they gave the first pick of the draft for. They had a bunch of expensive role players. Yep. You know, yep. I I think it was close. I mean, when, when we went into it the was. 2017 finals, people were like, who's going to win? I don't think people were like, the Warriors are going to roll them. Yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. The first one was definitely closer. The second one was ridiculous. I mean, LeBron's team Is that the team best like, team? The 17, is that the best team you've ever played? 17 Warriors? No, you had to play perfect to beat them. It yeah. felt like you had to play perfect. It felt like when you beat them, you're like, damn, we played great tonight. Like, we, you, you had to play great to beat them, especially in the third quarter. You could be up by 15 points, man, going into halftime, and everybody felt like it was 0-0 because we all knew it was coming. They were going to go on a run, especially back when they were at Oracle. That's, that, that gym used to be, it would be rocking in there, man. Like, yeah. it was just different. You would be up 20. You're like, yo, guys, we got to prepare ourselves for this run. We know they're going to turn that switch. They're a third quarter team, probably one of the, probably the best ever. And they're going to go on a monumental run. And it just felt like you couldn't slow them down once that, that gear got going, man. They had too much. Yeah. Steph was in his prime. KD was at the peak of his prime. Clay was in his prime. Draymond had his niche. It just, they had good role players around them. It, it was nuts, bro. And, and, you know, our teams got close. I was on that Houston, those Houston teams, man. Like, we were really good. We just we were we just weren't good enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was frustrating. You know, I was even on the Clippers team before that that tried to compete with the Warriors. We were really good. We were just right there. We just we just weren't good enough. And they were just that's the best team I've ever played against in my life. I've never played against a team better than them. <laughs> 